Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of Tech Reviews Nope. And today I received a email asking from a, a uh, mobile phone application developer how does facial recognition systems work and can they be fooled? And the simple answer is, is if it can be fooled, it's yes. But depending on the quality of the picture that's taken and the sophistication of the software, it's depending on how easy is the fool. But they all can be fooled with surgery or something. But uh, again, it's depending on the quality of picture and whatnot and these, these software because some softwares, no matter how good a picture is, if you have a 2D face, the thing will treat as a 3D face. So you can hold up someone else's picture in place. It's, so it's, it, that, that part depends highly on the person's skill that's developing the stuff. Now, I created this on the fly just for example case, just to show you what normal software looks, normal fa facial recognition software looks for. And it goes into multiple blocks and multiple sectors in it on the face. Now, no matter how good of a quality is of a uh, picture you got, it looks for the outside. And basically what I mean is it looks for the general shape of the head. Is it egg shape, oval, circle, football? What exactly is it? So it pretty much goes, and if we move this slightly over, it pretty much looks at the edges and tries to match it up, especially around here in the uh, forehead and here. It, um, there's also a torrent, so it, it knows that the hair and whatnot can throw it off, but it's the width and from here to the top of the forehead as much as you can see. So it goes from there, there's the first square and it doesn't matter how good the quality, that's pretty much what you're gonna get. The next thing, Let's click out here. The next thing that it looks for on a normal deal is the eye width and how far away from the mouth itself and how far away the mouth is from peak to peak. No matter if they're, you know, smiling or not, the uh, your mouth is not going to be too far away so that there's a little bit of tolerance. Because there has to be some tolerance to depend on if you're looking straight forward at it, it's going to get accurate. If, it, if you're not, then it has to put some tolerance in there. So it will say like 99% sure or 80% sure or something like that. And pretty much it's up to the coder to say if, the, if, if you think it's 99% sure, everything's 99% there, then just say it's okay and it's the person. So it's up to the person coding it to see how secure it is and see how much the person has to look straight into the camera or not. But anyways, the second thing is it looks at the distance between the eyes and the mouth. Now you might be asking why happens if the person is sideways? Well that's a good question. Now that's kind of like the best I can do on the fly and basically it looks for and it can give a partial recognition but if you're doing like a security login it's it's not going to let the person log in or it shouldn't but what it looks for is again the outside then it looks for the distance between the eye the ear and the mouth because let's say the ears over here on here then you know it has some idea of where the ear is this requires some higher quality picture and that's the reason why if someone's facing absolutely sideways of a camera and it's not a 3d camera then the facial recognition won't really work that well depend on certain factors obviously like lighting and whatnot so let's just say that's out of question, the person's looking straight on, so whatever of that. Now what is the next thing that the thing looks for, and th we're getting in more detail. The next thing is the distance between 
the eye, the one of the eyes, the tip of the mouth, and the ear. Let's just say the ear somewhere over here. Then it'll do the same thing on this side. And if that matches up, then it knows you're this person. If it doesn't, it says you're someone else. And uh, it actually works pretty well because the distance between your eye to your ear won't change unless you got surgery. The distance between your eye to your tip of your mouth or your center of your mouth will change, but not by much at all. The uh, and that, that's being that if you're not talking, then there's there it, it shouldn't change. If you're talking or do something dramatic, then it will change. So from there, it looks at the eyes and the nose, because that distance shouldn't change. Then the, uh, it looks somewhere over here from your eye, nose to your ear. And these distances won't change again, unless you got surgery. So it really, depends on the eye, nose, ear, and this area, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's between your eyes. The um, our, our thing is uh, obviously the outside. Basically, if you're looking for someone with an egg-shaped first egg-shaped head and they got like an oval head or um, not oval, but a circle head or, you know, whatever, then it knows that this is not your person, so move on and all these other things won't matter. And um, if you do tell it to progress on, then, you know, try to match it up and it takes a lot longer. But for security applications, it's looking for someone with this type of head. Then it looks for th this distance and this type of cheekbone and this distance, especially the distance between the eyes and the nose. Then the distance between the eyes and the ears. It's very simple algorithms. Again, these things don't change unless you get surgery. And um, for a security application, it, it's kind of stupid to get surgery and not tell it that you got surgery. So, what is some of the next things? And trust me, you can go pretty far. Uh, let's ch start changing the color because we're starting to get into some problems here. Now, it's looking the distance between the center of the two eyes the nose, the tip of the nose, and your cheekbone, your, I don't know, I'm not a biologist, I, I'm i not a medical person, so I don't know what they call it, but the inner cheekbone, the, the top, top portion of the cheekbone, if you look in the mirror, your um, top portion of your cheekbone, not, not, not where your jaw is, but the top portion of your cheekbone on the outside of your eye, that, um, the, the peak lines up to the bottom of your nose and it can take a measurement between your eye your bottom of your nose and um that there's also some tolerance with the nose because of different nose types and whatnot so there's that now the next thing is is um the lips it goes from the jaw depending on what type of jaw you have it looks at the distance between the, sorry about this, the distance between the peaks of your mouth and that. So it looks at also this, if it's straight or not. So, I mean, it went, it, there's a torrent there, but it, it, it looks at that. Because if your mouth is fully open, then, then it says there's a no-go, that, that doesn't match. If your mouth is closed, acting normal, and you got a picture of your mouth closed and acting normal, then it will look at the peaks, the middle, and the down to see the distance. Because let's put it this way, let's say if you're looking for someone with a five, right here, five inches, five centimeters, five, I don't know, five miles, it doesn't matter. Five, and the person has six, that's not your person, it's obvious. So that's that's how that part works and looks at the distance between their same, same thing. So this entire thing is just mapping out the distances between things, especially the distance between things that 
don't move. Again, your eyes, your nose, your ears, your jaw. Obviously, you can open and close your mouth and that'll affect that. But your distance between, depending on what type of jaw you have, or the outer jaw, I don't, I don't know what the medical term is, but that and some other stuff. But that, that's pretty much it. Again, it can go up to, uh, I've seen it up to 64 blocks of, it looks like this, and just block after block on someone's face. And it's just a facial recognition software, just recognizing every small detail. And the more you have it looking at, the more accurate it's going to be on things. But there's a trade-off. The longer it takes for the software to detect someone, so if someone's looking at someone and you take a still picture, that's one thing, but if, I don't know, say for example, if you're security at a store or something and a person's about to walk out the door and that's a known theft, well, you need to know it now. So you, you having something very high tech and very up there, it's going to hurt you in the end. But, um, you know, it's, it's, this is the basics of it. So, if you got any questions or anything, then feel free to leave them in the comment section. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. But uh, you can also leave them in the, the mail section on YouTube or email me on techviewsnelp.com. Have a great day.